All right, everyone. Well, again, thank you for joining us for our second community meeting for rezoning petition 2019-179. Uh, this is in addition to the rezoning community meeting that we had back on February 5th, for those of you that attended. Quite a lot has happened since then, um, I guess in the world and with this particular zoning petition, which is why we wanted to request for everyone to join us for a new presentation. Uh, I'm Paul Pinnell with Urban Design Partners and Ron Staley with Verde Homes is, is on the Zoom call as well. Ron, I'm not sure if you're, you're able to say hi, but if you'd like to, please, please feel free to do so. Sure, yeah. Um, thanks, Paul, and, and thanks, community, for allowing us the opportunity to represent um, this very unique parcel in Plaza Midwood. And um, I'm sure through the, through the sl different slides, you'll be able to see that we've worked very diligently with uh, various organizations within Plaza Midwood and, and other organizations to make sure that we come up with a solution that's, that's the best viable solution for this project. And I uh, just want to say thank you and appreciate your time today. Well, and, and with that, we will uh, jump right in and we're gonna do a brief overview here of, of the project and uh, the previous concepts that we have explored on this one acre parcel located really between Hawthorne Lane and the plaza and at the end of, end of Mimosa Avenue. Uh, with that, let's, uh, let's jump on in here. Let's see. So just quick context for where the project is located, where this petition is located. I'm sure you're all familiar with where it is. Like I had just mentioned, it's located between the plaza and Hawthorne Lane, directly adjacent Parkwood Avenue at the end of Mimosa Avenue. The existing zoning on site is R5 and also R22 MF. Uh, the R22MF is concentrated along Parkwood Avenue with the R5 uh, at the rear of the parcel. And this is a unique parcel since it's uh, really bookended on all sides with existing single family and, and also with uh, Parkwood Avenue. So we explored quite a few concepts on site uh, initially looking at this project and petition as uh, townhomes. And we'll go through a couple of the options here, all of which are not good options, but we explored them nonetheless. We originally looked at connecting Mimosa to Parkwood and lining that connection with uh, townhomes, in this case 14, with some on-street parking and parallel parking. Different configurations of townhomes and parking on site, still connecting Mimosa Avenue to Parkwood Avenue. And then we started looking at possibly doing a series of quadruplexes that are inwardly facing towards a motor court, still connecting Mimosa Avenue to Parkwood Avenue. Combinations of different ideas with motor courts and townhomes. And then around concept five, we started arriving at an option that we felt we wanted to, to start exploring. Uh, in conversations that we had had with the Plaza Midwood Land Use Committee, we had discovered that connecting Mimosa Avenue to Parkwood Avenue may not be in the best interest of the community. So in this particular concept, we had removed that connection. And centralizing a multifamily building up along Parkwood Avenue with detached single family homes to mirror the rhythm of what is provided along Hawthorne Lane and fronting those along a private two way alley street. And essentially, this was the basis of our initial rezoning submittal that was made, I uh, believe, back in January. I believe it was a January submittal. And this is primarily what, what we had uh, uh, submitted to the city for its initial review. Uh, from there, we had begun to develop what those architectural elevations would look like, the single family homes, what the multifamily building would look like presenting a front along Parkwood Avenue, 
And while it's a little grainy, I apologize, uh, we ended up uh, pivoting from that single family detached option to concept six, which was keeping the multifamily building up along Parkwood Avenue and then doing four duplexes behind the uh, multifamily building. And I believe this was uh, a result of the feedback that we had received from our initial community meeting that we had in February. And from there, uh, we have now arrived at our new site plan, uh, which is uh, a multifamily building along Parkwood Avenue with 22 multifamily units and a triplex in the rear, which is uh, accessed via Mimosa Avenue. Uh, the multifamily building from previous uh, iterations is now three stories. There's a small portion of covered parking, uh, three parking spaces here. The multifamily building is also lower in height. I believe in the uh, initial multifamily studies that we had presented to the community, the multifamily building was four stories. It's now three stories. And then the triplex would be a two and a half story triplex as well with surface parking uh, between the two uh, resident, residential buildings. And it's also worth noting that there is no vehicular connection or pedestrian connection between Mimosa Avenue and Parkwood Avenue. And those, uh, these two uh, portions of the project are separated by what we are uh, uh, indicating as tree save area. And here you can see the current uh, rezoning plan that is in for review with the city of Charlotte. We've got the multifamily building up along Parkwood with its 22 units, the triplex in the rear, tree save area adjacent the existing single family and also separating the triplex from the surface parking on site. We've also conducted a tree survey of all the existing trees on site. One large tree adjacent the triplexes, uh, we are planning on, on keeping that tree in place. And also a series of trees on site uh, running along the property line here, uh, which we plan on keeping those as well. And then providing supplemental plantings for the tree save areas that we are, are indicated on, on the plan with a, with a hatch. It might be a little difficult for everyone to see. But then additional tree plantings on site of a rate of approximately one or 36 trees per acre. Um, so additional landscape screening for the single family homes to the north, or excuse me, to, I guess that would be, yep, to the north. And then uh, six foot wood fence screening as well to complement the landscape screening. You really want to make sure that there's uh, adequate separation between, between the two properties. In addition, it's worth noting that the multifamily building uh, now uh, has uh, three affordable units the initial multifamily building with 12 units and it had a commitment for two affordable units at 80 percent ami this new 22 unit building still has the the two 80 percent ami affordable units but we have added one additional for sale 50 percent ami unit as well so that brings the total affordable units within the multifamily building to three and also just as a reminder all of the residential units on site are for sale. These, these are not rental properties. These are for sale condominiums and uh, for sale units within the, the triplex building. This is an updated uh, model of the multifamily building along Parkwood. You can see it has um, uh, three stories, pitched roofs, the architecture is uh, in keeping with the craftsman style of the community. And then the two units adjacent Parkwood uh, have doors which open directly onto the Parkwood uh, right of way. An elevation of what the building would look like addressing Parkwood. An elevation of the building and the building materials addressing the side yard. And then a model of what the triplex would look like adjacent Mimosa. Each unit would have its own garage uh, and also it's a three-story three story building, three-story structure with a variety of building materials. 
And as it stands right now, this is our updated uh, rezoning timeline. You can see that we're, we're making our way through the, the timeline here and we are uh, looking to be going to a public hearing on July 20th, that's this coming Monday. And then a city council decision uh, would be September 21st. It's worth bringing to everyone's attention that uh, there is no zoning meeting for city council in August. Uh, so September 21st would be the earliest opportunity that this petition would have at a city council decision. So with that, um, I believe that covers the majority of the changes that have occurred uh, with this zoning petition. Uh, and from there, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to open up to, to any questions that uh, folks may have, any comments or thoughts, and, and uh, we're happy to, to answer any questions and provide any additional details that we can. So thank you. So, so I do have a question and maybe I missed it, but for the fa uh, multifamily residential structure, 22 units, so that's actually 22 um, condos that will be sold, is that correct? That's correct, 22 condominiums for sale within, within the multifamily building structure along Parkwood, that's correct. And then three additional units within the triplex. So the total residential units on site is a total of 25 units. And how many parking places? So each triplex will have its own garage and its own driveway and then the total number of parking spaces serving the multifamily structure would be 34 parking spaces. So, so you think that they, that they can park a car in the driveway and in the garage? Uh, yes, that's the way it's been planned and that's the way that uh, uh, we're, we're intending the triplex to operate. That's correct. So what's the total number for the 25 units? The total number for the 25 units would be 34 plus six, so 40 parking spaces. What was the rationale for opening up Mimosa Avenue and not having the families from the triplex exit and enter through Parkwood? So the community shared a lot of concerns with connecting uh, Mimosa Avenue with Parkwood in the beginning of the rezoning petition. Uh, mainly uh, unwanted folks possibly cutting through Parkwood. Uh, Parkwood, or the Mimosa Avenue being a historic neighborhood as well, a lot of the community members were concerned about cut through traffic, cut through pedestrian traffic. And I think uh, the community had grown accustomed to Mimosa Avenue being uh, a, a dead end, which would be uh, good for their families and, and children playing along Mimosa Avenue, and they felt like it would be a a safer condition. I, I would just like to add to that. Um, our initial concern was we didn't want Mimosa turning into a parking lot. You can't park on Hawthorne, you can't park on Parkwood, you can't park on the plaza, and you're creating 25 additional residences which will have less than two unit, two parking places per unit, and they're all going to overflow park on Mimosa because it's the only option. So we had asked at the first meeting that there be a fence so that no pedestrian access could act could could connect to this new development that's that's almost been i mean that's definitely been ignored and made worse by now creating a, a car access so i guess i'm not seeing how this is an improvement so vehicular access is being provided to the triplex those three units but vehicular access is not being provided from the multifamily building to mimosa there is so that's three units more than was in the previous plan that was presented to the community. Uh, with direct vehicular driveway access to a residential structure, yes, that's correct. Previously, there was no access to Mimosa. That's correct. But now that it's a single triplex, uh, yes, they will need uh, some means of reaching their, their home. That's correct. And why can't, and I think the previous question was, why can't they access off of that parking lot that's feet away from their, their structure? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's certainly an option that we could, that we could look at. And our, our previous concern from the development meeting that we, we are very concerned about Mimosa becoming a parking lot. 25 units is 
six more units than are currently on Mimosa with all of the single family homes on Mimosa. And we already have a parking issue. And so we ask that there be no pedestrian access to Mimosa. And right now there's nothing blocking pedestrian access other than a little strip of grass. So that's certainly an option that, that we can look at. Would a screen fence be a solution? A, a fence that is not easily jumped over or doesn't have a gate would, would be the solution, yes. Okay. And forgive me, I'm, I'm, I'm writing notes as I, as, as I listen. So if I'm, not, if I'm not looking at the camera, I I'm, I'm <laughs> apologize. My concern too is the additional traffic coming down through Mimosa. I don't know if you or Ron have driven down Mimosa, but I'm not sure what the width is, but it's a very narrow street. Mm -hmm. Current um, homeowners have to park on the street because of limited or no um, driveways. So any additional um, traffic flow through using Mimosa um, would not be optimal in my opinion. Okay. Mimosa is 16 feet wide currently, which is not very wide. Okay. And as you stated there, it's a historic district and these, these houses were, were not, were built in a period where it was not common to have multiple cars, which we have today. So there is a lot of the current residents already using the street parking. Yeah, I want to add that not only I'm a resident of Mimosa, not only are we using up all the spots possible on the street, we are even parking on the sidewalk. That's how poor the parking situation is. Okay. And I, I apologize because I just came in from out of town. My question for the 22 units, how many bedrooms for each of these units? Are they varied? So we're still working through the total bedrooms, but I, I, and Ron, you, Ron Staley, I believe you're on the call. You may be able to speak to a few more specifics as to the bedroom count, but it's a combination of uh, one bedroom and, and two bedroom units within the building. Yeah, it's a combination of one and two bedrooms, but the majority of them are one bedroom units because we wanted to make sure that we kept the traffic, kept the uh, parking count down to support um, this new residential structure. Well, the, um, I live right next to a duplex, and the problem is one bedroom units normally have two people, and that's just the reality of this neighborhood. I have four people living next to me for a duplex. That's four cars, and they have one driveway. So are, they, are they renting, like, or do they, do they own the duplex? No, they're renting. Okay, so these, these are for sale products here. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that's not going to be a couple. I mean, it, face it, it's very expensive to live in this neighborhood. So probably a one bedroom will be very likely uh, with a couple. And that equals two cars. So that right now the, the, the 34 parking spaces for 25 units is not adequate. Then you add the triplex and you add, you, you really need, if, if for each unit needs two parking places, if it has two bedrooms, it needs two parking places at minimum, in my opinion. And, and that's on an, everyday basis you know one person has a party and all of a sudden you got a bunch of extra cars and they're all going to park on mimosa that's why we have a lot of concerns i mean it's not even like people have parties people i mean there's always parking issues with parties but even on a daily issue we there's not enough parking for your 22 unit structure that you have in my opinion that you have and i don't know and I apologize again for being late, but I didn't hear if there's a, is there a wall that somehow separates the triplex from the residential? Uh, that's a, certainly an option that we can explore. Yeah, because if not, there's no wall at the parking lot between the triplex and the residential. All the overflow parking from the residential as well as their friends are gonna be just walk across the street and walk through those, that green area right down into Mimosa and park there. And we right now, and I'm sure you're aware that we only can park on one side of our, our street is very narrow, like Christina said, and we can only park legally on one side of the street. So it's not even like you have both sides of the street available. So uh, most of people are in the people 
that we just do not want any access to mimosa at all. And I feel like even your current, it is improved with the, the, the houses that you had originally there, but it's still too many units for parking places, even in, in its current state. Hi. So, so everyone knows the, the zoning, uh, City of Charlotte would require one parking space per residential unit on site. So uh, we're, we're, we're parked 25 parking, and I know this is, this is not really a, a feasible solution ever for, for any community, at least we're not there yet in, in the city. Uh, 25 parking spaces is what would be required on site and we're providing 40. So there's a fine line that um, developers um, and, and residential communities need, need to walk between providing too many parking spaces and providing an, an adequate amount of parking spaces. So the, the, the parking discussion and, and um, questions and statements um, are, is, is something that everyone is always very passionate about. And um, de depending on who you're talking to and, and the type of project that's being proposed, um, the solutions for parking are, are always gonna be very, very different in, in everybody's eyes. Uh, so I just wanna let everyone know that this has certainly been something that has been high on our agenda to, to balance the total units that are being proposed on site and also uh, re removing, minimizing, mitigating any kind of risk of uh, this overflow condition that I know the, the residents and, and you're all uh, concerned about. And, and that stuff is by right, but you're asking to change the zoning for this piece of property. So we have concerns with there being any changes to the current zoning on this piece of property. So parking, it may not be the city's concern, but the neighbors that live right around this property, it's a big concern. And since you're asking to change the current zoning, we're voicing our sincere protest with the amount, amount of parking and what it's going to mean for our street. Yep, and, and we are keeping those, those sincere concerns very top of mind as we make design decisions as we request this, this petition. Hi, Paul, I have a question. With Mimosa, uh, first of all, I see that you guys have made some really great changes to the um, project. But my question is for Mimosa, you know how around the city that in certain areas where there's tight parking on a particular street, they have parking by permit only? Is that something that we could explore for Mimosa where uh, it wouldn't necessarily be a lot sort of like I hear some of the residents concerns about visitors and things like that is that something that could be entertained for that strip of mimosa the parking bar permit it's certainly something that we can talk to CDOT about um, there has been some uh, success with with parking by permit within a uh, Charlotte right-of-way in uptown uh, but outside of uptown um, previous conversations have been met with pushback from the city in, in allowing that condition. Now, Mimosa being a, a historic street and considering its width, uh, it certainly may be worth us asking CDOT if that's a possibility here. And we can, we can do that. I think that would help if possible to eliminate some of the concerns about folks having guests or coming in and sort of worried about it being more. Um, I think that by eliminating the connection between the two, you sort of um, prevent folks from living in the multifamily from, you know, sort of going over into Mimosa. Mm -hmm. And like some of the folks talked about, you know, maybe a gate or a key card entry or something, you know, something that they can't, you know, they can't get across that's there to the right. other side. So I think that that prevention already helps folks from being able to go over and park on Mosa because it would be, it just would be really inconvenient. Okay. Well, um, hello. Conversation with CDOT. Hello. I would like to, um, uh, two items just on the, the triplex, just the picture that was presented is very different and has a very different look from what our historic district street looks like if it's connected. And my, I don't know what details, but it looks just like, um, I don't know. It, but, that just looks like, well, I don't know. I think that's very not like this street, which is a historic street. 
and I doubt that it's going to have that much grass space. However, and I would like to know more about what that is, and um, I just, it just looks like a little modern, something that does not fit in, and it's going to be, and I'd like to know how much that price point is, and how many bedrooms are, th are that, and what, what the deal is there. Uh, Ron, do you have any specific? I'd like to mention uh, the this parking. Go oh, ahead, yeah, ma'am. I'm sorry. Um, you can answer that. And then I did want to address the parking lot in the middle of this. A huge parking lot. Um, I'll address the uh, question about the triplex. Yeah, the triplexes are going to be two bedroom, two and a half bath homes. Uh, attached homes and they will each have a garage and we haven't finalized the pricing yet because as you know it takes some time to kind of get some of this through land development before this thing even starts construction but our goal is to make it sure that it's priced affordably not affordably but make sure it's priced within the same comps of other attached housing in and around Plaza Midwood. So there aren't many uh, attached comps, like triplexes, I guess, new builds. I mean, is, was there any thought to making this a single family home that would have logically probably two cars accessing off of Mosa as opposed to six? Yeah, I think uh, we went back and forth a couple times um, with different, different options and the most economical option for this project being in such a mass, large mass of land on Plaza Midwood, um, in Plaza Midwood, was that the triplex, we could still make the look and feel that we needed to keep in conjunction with the existing historic district along Mimosa. Uh, the other thing is that we, we actually do have a project in Plaza Midwood on Hammerton Street. So it's attached housing as well. It's not a triplex, it is seven townhomes. And, uh, yeah, so Hammerton's not a historic district like Mimosa, but understood. Um, there is a, a pretty big unit of attached townhomes right off of um, Thomas Street that yeah. is looks very different from this, um, which if you want to say this is in, I haven't seen anything that looks like this in Plaza Midwood um, yeah. in this area. So I would just like to say that I think the one that's on Pecan Street is... Uh, right off of Thomas Street, which is right off of the historic district, has a very different look. Um, it fits in with the neighborhood. It fits in with the historic district. And uh, I think that this is does not. Um, and because just to your point that this is similar to what others are, because in my point, and I walk around this neighborhood all the time, and this is not like what you see. The other point, so I'll move on from that, is if you put this huge parking lot of, what, 40 cars in the middle of this section, people on either side of our on Hawthorne residential neighbors are going to have views and a heat zone of cars coming in and out all the time. And you know, there's no, instead of doing parking, a different set of parking, I just, to have something like that in a very n nice neighborhood is really, and the water runoff and the pavement and what there shows two trees, it's just, you know, I think, I don't know, I just think that that's unacceptable. I don't know what you can do. I mean, there's a big, huge division, like cluck builders across the street that's right on Parkwood, that seems totally different and of a different character than this. But this parking lot is cars coming in and out, back and forth behind people's backyards. So, so are you happy with that? Well, I, we had originally uh, in the multifamily building along Parkwood had uh, podium parking where we were parking um, 
I believe it was 17 parking spaces within the building itself. However, the building was four stories. And there was a lot of concern about the size and scale of the building. So in an effort to bring down the, the size and scale of, of the multifamily building, we removed the uh, first floor parking area and placed it within a surface parking area and then surrounded the parking with screen fences for everybody. So uh, the majority of the homes, I, I don't think will we'll have direct views of, of the parking. While, while everyone will know it's there, um, I, I don't think the views that, that uh, some are, are concerned with will, will be as much of a concern since the parking lot screen with a- Let me just say that there, there's gonna be heat, there's gonna be noise, You've created a hot zone of cars, hot sun, and I do believe I am not, you know, I, I just think that that's environmentally bad. Um, the runoff is going to be bad. And we're already in a low creek zone, and it's, uh, I, you know, you're going to put trees on every line. You've got 40 cars coming in and out all the time. That is a lot of cars. We'll certainly make note of, of your concerns and, and put them into the, the meeting minutes um, and we'll, we'll have your concerns in there. Do the triplexes have Parkwood or Mimosa addresses? Uh, that hasn't been determined yet. Well, well I guess I'm, the reason I'm asking is, you know, there, there are setback requirements and, and right now you're about five feet off of that rear setback if you're considering it Parkwood. If you oriented the triplex toward the parking mass, you could probably back back it up like 15 feet, which would be more standard for, for that poor house that's got a backyard of, of a triplex instead of a, uh, you know, the standard setback you'd expect in a residential area. So I'm, I'm going to um, talk about the, uh, the parking lot again. Um, uh, I don't think this is, from my point of view, it's not an improvement from the last um, iteration of the site plan, just because there seems to be a lot less green space and a lot of concentrated pavement. Um, it, I think we talked about this at the last public meeting, but we have a serious water runoff problem and I, I don't see how this helps that in any way and uh, have to have a parking this I mean it's a really big parking lot and you look at you look at this aerial and just see how out of context it is with everything that's been around and and not just been around for five ten years I mean this is an historic area it's totally out of character and out of context um, you keep coming back. I was looking, you know, you're at the presentation. You started off with about, I think, maybe 12 units, and then it went up to 14. And now you're all the way up to 25 units on a one acre lot that's surrounded by what's it's R5, but it's mostly, I, I know the area in Parkwood is R22, but it's not built that way. But a lot of these are R3. I mean, it's just what you're trying to do is way out of context you just have too many units and because you have too many units you have to do something totally out of context and like this gigantic parking lot uh, if the parking lot were to be uh, pervious paving I I'm hearing a lot of concerns about uh, water runoff uh, Pervious asphalt options um, have gotten quite a bit better over the years. Um, it would that be something that, that everyone thinks that we should potentially explore here? 40 cars I, in I, and out. I, I don't really buy it. And I, I, I'll, I'll let somebody else speak. I think that when you look at it, any improvement in terms of how the water runoff, I think, benefits everybody. 
Uh, I just want to speak to the historic, you know, structure. Uh, it looks to me that the multifamily building pretty much faces Parkwood. And, you know, that sort of look that's there. And as you can see, there are already uh, another multifamily sort of townhomes across the street. So in terms of it fitting in on Parkwood with, you know, transportation and, and, the, and all of that, I think that that fits that area. I think the concern and what, you know, making it look is the, the back end where the mimosa, where the townhomes um, are, is where, where folks are probably looking to capture a more historic look in that rear. But I feel like you guys have attempted to try to separate, which I think was a good job of the two, to where folks, A, don't feel like that B part is really a part of this development. It feels like it's two different pieces. It doesn't feel like it's one. So I feel like that, you know, if you're visiting and you're coming in off of Parkwood or you're coming in off of the plaza and the way that it's set up, especially, again, if we can put even more of a connector or a gate or a fence there, it really doesn't even feel like it's the same project, which I think helps overall with the flow, um, you know, to me. And I think that it's important that when we, we look at Charlotte and we're all sort of here in, in this growing area, I like the fact that we have addressed putting some affordability here. So I, I thank you guys for thinking about that as well. Certainly, absolutely. The the uh, portion where the, the the that we're looking at right now that is currently zoned R twenty two. Is that correct? That's correct. It is. And so, if you made that a little bit higher, I know you. I'm just thinking, but you know, you originally had podium parking underneath. If you could do that in an area that was previously already zoned R22, you could probably eliminate a lot of that parking lot in the back by just moving it under the building. Is that a possibility? Uh, if the community is willing to potentially take a look at or, you know, a higher building, a taller building there, then um, I, I think that's an option that we could continue to explore. R Ron, what, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm open to exploring this option as well. I, I thought that there was something uh, from um, Charlotte zoning that was talking about the height being too high with being four stories at one point. So it was kind of happy medium. We were trying to make sure we make uh, Charlotte zoning happy as well as, you know, make sure that we had the required parking uh, to meet the bedroom counts that we have on site. It's, it's a possibility to, to stay with the same height until we reduce the, the number of units in that building. Uh, could, you, could you repeat that again? I apologize. I didn't. Yeah, I think if you reduce the number of units, you can still have the same length of building and still have three, three stories. Mm -hmm. Making a note here of that. Again, I think I asked this question last time. Like right now, by right, how many units can you put on this development? And then contrast that with how many units that you're applying through this rezoning to be able to build right. and find out what the difference is. is. And um, if you just say that out loud. Yep, so I, I think utilizing a blended density of the one acre uh, with the R22 up along Parkwood and then the R5 in the rear, I think the total buy right units today would, I think the number's 12, if, if memory serves me well. It's been a while since I've done that done that number, but I, I, I seem to recall that the buy right total dwelling units on, on, on site is 12. So it, I, I think last time you said, so it is, it's one third of an acre that's R22, so that puts you at seven units. And I think you said last time, by right, you could build one one single family home in the back. So that makes eight instead of 12. Well, I, I think there's two different things at work here. So it, there's a by right of the total density based on the current zoning district. And then there's how many, if it were single family, 
I think the question may have been asked, you know, how many single family homes can you place here? And that would be two or three because uh, you're limited on total single family homes that you can place uh, along a public right of way in Charlotte. Uh, you're limited by your total right of way frontage. So I, I think that might have been part of the discussion that you, you may be referring to. So you're saying if you don't rezone the property, then somehow or another you can build 12 units on the site. Well, if you did multifamily and you uh, isolated the multifamily project within the existing R22 MF, uh, that, that's correct. Um, and then uh, it'd probably be a, a single, single family home uh, uh, at the end of Mimosa. So is that eight or 12? Again, <laughs> I'd have to go back and, and do a blended density calculation. I think the total DUA uh, that you can capture on site is 12. Um, but I, I'd have to go through and do a little bit of math to figure that out. Okay, so I mean, my point is that the, this site plan is 25. Correct. Exclamation point. In the middle of a historic district. Well, actually, I'd like to bring to everyone's attention that this parcel is not within the historic district. The historic district ends at the end of Mimosa. So this particular one acre parcel is not located within the historic overlay. I, I want everyone to understand that. It's and adjacent. By that, by that explanation, the the, then by that explanation, then it should, Mimosa should be, it should end at Mimosa. So there should be a wall between Mimosa and whatever this parcel is. If, it, if, if it's facing, if this triplex is facing Mimosa and technically on Mimosa because it's viewable, it should be historical then. Okay, and that, that's absolutely gonna be an option that, that we're gonna take a look at. I guess uh, we're, we're all very strongly no access to Mimosa because none of our concerns seem to be answered with the, the, the amount of people that are going to be using this area or living here. Yeah, I agree. I, I think at any point in time, if you walk down Mimosa, you will see car after car parked on sidewalks because of the lack of access with the current residents. And honestly, like the, 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 the access really is about parking. It, 15 years ago, it would have been about crime and, and we're concerned about people walking through there. And, but that really isn't a concern probably of the neighborhood these days. But 25 units adjacent to our, our street where we're the only street that offers on-street parking, it's a big deal. Sorry, again, everybody, sorry, I'm making notes as we, as we go here. All right. Well, uh, Ron, do, do you have any, any thoughts or, or comments that you would like to make regarding, regarding your petition? Yeah, no, I'm, I appreciate all the feedback. I mean, sounds like um, the parking issue is one issue that, you know, we need to kind of revisit or take a look at again. Um, sounds like the triplex coming off Mimosa uh, is something that we need to maybe look at. And, and actually the look and feel of it as well. Maybe we need to go by and ride by and look at a couple of those houses. I do know that we're not locked in to the actual look and feel, um, the actual look of that triplex. So that's something we can definitely revisit going forward. But um, it's, it's a real tough and fine balance with doing these, these developments within inner city communities with, you know, with parking and, and uh, livability and walkability, which is, you know, kind of 
when you look at what Charlotte wants, Charlotte wants more walkable, but you also got to be uh, mindful of the neighbors as well. So, but I want to thank everybody for the opportunity. I'm definitely listening, definitely hearing you guys. Yeah, I have, I have done the, the best I possibly can to take good notes during this meeting. And uh, just want to want to say to everyone, thank you for, for taking time out of your, out of your week. Uh, certainly appreciate everyone's input for our second meeting. And uh, we will certainly continue our dialogue with the community and the Plaza Midwood Land Use Committee. Um, and uh, we will be sure to keep everyone connected with, with uh, future updates on this zoning petition. So oh, one more thing, I'm sorry, uh, on that note, um, and thank you, by the way, for taking our questions. Um, I live at 1600 Mimosa, and I have received no notifications of this development at all, zero. So we are- what, what, are, what are the requirements for you to communicate with everyone on the street? Yep, so we are provided a list uh, that is generated by the City of Charlotte Planning Department. And that uh, City of Charlotte Planning yeah. Department list that we are provided uh, is, 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 is a list of everyone that lives within 300 feet of the zoning petition. So if, if you live within 300 feet of the zoning petition, then you will be provided the numbers that we will send out. Um, and uh, if, if you don't live within 300 feet, then you're not going to receive the notice. So if, yeah. If you haven't received a notice and you're at this meeting, I think that's that's pretty good. <laughs> that, that, well, I think we try to be pretty close, but I'm sorry. So you, you said if I'm not within 300 feet, um, I'm not on that list. Um, can I, how can I get on that list through, through you? Um, uh, you're more than welcome to email your contact information to me at paul at urbandesignpartners.com. Again, Paul, P-A-U-L, at urbandesignpartners.com. And we will be certain that any future correspondence that we send out, we will include you on that mailer. Great. I appreciate it. Thank you. Of course. Absolutely. Paul, well, can you say that email address again, please? Yeah. It's Paul, P-A-U-L, at urbandesignpartners, with an S on the end, dot com. Thank you. Sure. I think there's a lot of people on Mimosa that don't get these letters and would like to be included. So I'm going to share that. Okay. We have a pretty good network, uh, little Mimosa family around here, and we definitely okay. pass the word around. But we only, have only two or three houses that actually get your letters. That's strange. We I believe we sent out 65 total letters. So it's. Well, they might be going to the people on Hawthorne or I don't know, but on. Right, there may be, yep, going to Hawthorne and uh, across the street in Villa Heights. But yeah, we sent out 65 notifications for, for this meeting that we're actually conducting right now. So okay. there are quite a few that went out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, again, um, thank you everybody. Really, really appreciate your time tonight and uh, look forward to presenting future future renditions of this. And, and I'm genuinely hopeful that we can arrive at a, a petition that everyone can be comfortable with. So thank you. And uh, with Bye. that, I hope everyone stays safe, stays healthy, wear, wears a mask and, and uh, enjoys the remainder of your week. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.